So let's prove the relationship between chord and the radius. Okay? So here is what's given. Segment AC is perpendicular to XB. Do you see? That's given. So that means this is 90. What is AC given? I mean, what is AC called? Uh, a segment that has two endpoints on the circle is called what? A chord. And what is XB called on the circle? A radius. You see? It's a relationship between chord and the radius. So that's given. So let's do the two column proofs. Remember, the two column proofs, we write the statements and reasons. So what was given? Segment AC is perpendicular to XB, and that is given. So can I put this perpendicular sign there? And let's see what we are trying to prove. Segment AD, this one, is equal to that. Okay? In order to do that, remember, whenever we want to find the sides are equal, we can use the triangle. And if the triangles are congruent, then we can say their corresponding parts are congruent. Remember that? How can we make a triangle out of this? Can we connect X to C? What is that called? Radius. Can we connect X to A? What is that called? Radius. And what's the relationship between those radius in the same circle? Would AX be congruent to XC? Would these be congruent? Yes, why? All radii are congruent in the same circle, right? Remember the definition of circle, it is the locus of point, the set of point that is equidistant from the center. So these two are equal because all radii are congruent in the circle, right? Radius is plural, we write radii. And they say this is perpendicular, so we know this is a what? Right triangle. Do you guys see it? We are trying to prove these two are congruent first. Then we can say these corresponding parts are congruent by CPCTC. So what else can you say of the diagram? Is there any shared sides? Yes. Isn't dx equal to dx? What is it called? Reflexive property. So now I have angle side side. So is angle side side good property to criteria to prove the triangle? No, ASS, the bad word, and AAA does not work. So then what? Can we not prove these are congruent? What's the other option? What type of triangle are these? Right triangle, then you can use what? HL. What is HL? If it's a right triangle, and if you have hypotenuse and one of the legs congruent, then they are congruent, right? So I'm going to say triangle ADX is congruent to triangle C, DX, by HL. You see how these two triangles are congruent? Then now, can I say AD is congruent to DC? Isn't that what they ask us to prove? AD is congruent to CD. Why? The corresponding parts So I can see now, segment, was it AD, AC, what was it, what was the name of the side, AB, AD is congruent to 
DC or CD because corresponding parts of congruent triangles are congruent. Remember that? So let's go back and see what we just proved. If the chord and the radius are perpendicular, do you see what they gave us? They said the chord was perpendicular to the radius, then the radius cuts the chord in half. That's a chord radius theorem. Again, you see, if they are perpendicular, that means the radius cut the chord in half. These are equal. So whenever you have a chord and a radius is perpendicular to that chord, these two are equal. That's what we just proved. Okay, so let's write the theorem down. The radius chord theorem says if a radius is perpendicular to a chord that was given, right? Then the then it bisects the chord. What's the converse theorem? Converse means you switch if and then. So the converse of radius chord theorem is the other way around. Here, if it's bisecting, I mean perpendicular, then it's bisecting. The converse means you switch in if and then. So it says radi if the radius bisects, then the cores are perpendicular to the radius. Does it make sense? <coughs> So the difference is for the converse, I'm not going to prove it, but here you see how they're given and proved genes, that's converse. Converse means you switch if and then. You see here, if they're perpendicular, they're congruent. Now, if they're congruent, then it must be perpendicular. Yes. Yeah. So now let's use the radius chord theorem to solve do some of the questions here. Number one. Next page. Determine the length of DC. And they should say this is 90. Okay? Go ahead and say it was 90. It should be given. Right? Otherwise, we don't know the relationship. So if the radius is perpendicular to the chord, what's the, what happens? It bisected the chord, so this must be also... Six. Okay. Number four. X has a radius of 13. What's the radius? This is 13. Is, do you see any other radius on the circle? You see this? That's also 13. Do you guys see it? And X... W, I mean ZW is 12, and XV is perpendicular to ZY. These two are perpendicular. So again, you see how the chord is perpendicular to the radius? That means if this is 12, what is this equal to? 12. That's the radius chord theorem. So now determine the XW. How would you find this? What type of triangle do you get? Right triangle. So you can do the Pythagorean theorem or this one you should also know the ratio. What, what's the ratio that you could memorize and just use? It's 3, 4, 5 and 5, 12 and 13. You see? 5, 12, and 13, so the answer was 5. If you didn't remember 5, 12, 13, what do you do? You can do a squared plus 12 squared equals to 13 squared. So a squared equals to, you can subtract 12 squared from both sides. What's 13 squared minus 12 squared? 25. 
So now you square root it to get a equals to 5. 